Hello and welcome to the Comlux Instant Review. Please visit comluxflashcards.com for complete Comlux prep resources. Let's talk about anterior uveitis. Well, this is uh, on the Comlux to make the diagnosis. You want to look for uh, doing a slit lamp examination whenever a patient has pain, photophobia, lacrimation, conjunctival hyperemia, and cells and protein flare in the aqueous humor. What happens here is that there is basically inflammation of the anterior inner vascular coat from the ciliary body through the iris. So there's an iritis and an iridocyclitis. That's the key terms. Uh, you patients can also have chorioretinitis in which there's uh, posterior inner vascular coat toxoplasmosis, CMV, histoplasmosis, sarcoidosis, syphilis, TB, or toxocariosis. So keep in mind that um, Iritis and chorioretinitis are two terms that are associated highly with anterior uveitis. Um, we, we said that um, patients have pain, photophobia, lacrimation, conjunctival hyperemia, and you can do a slit lamp examination to make the diagnosis. But what are the primary causes of uh, anterior uveitis? Well, JRA, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, sarcoid, TB, Kawasaki's disease, ulcerative colitis, ankylosing spondylitis, Reiter's syndrome, and spiroctyl uh, diseases like Lyme disease, Biquet syndrome, also Steven Johnson syndromes have all been implicated to cause anterior uveitis. The treatment is the um, you know pre treating the primary cause and giving the patients uh, topical steroids to help reduce some of the inflammation. But really understand that there's various associations with this disease, and that's really key. Another high yield topic is glaucoma. So. Um, what's important to understand in glaucoma here is that there can be damage to the optic nerve with uh, the visual field loss at um, resulting in an elevated in, um, intraocular pressure within the eye. So that's a key factor that you want to remember. Also the key thing is you know the congenital causes begin within three uh, years versus the juvenile are through the um, are mainly because of trauma, intraocular, uh, hemorrhage or ocular inflammatory diseases and they begin um, anywhere from you know age 3 to 30 years old so there's two types here the most um, common is a primary cause due to an isolated abnormality of the drainage of the eye that's the key how do you make the diagnosis which is what's important on the complex excessive tearing photophobia and blepharism all because of corneal irritation also corneal and ocular enlargement and conjunctival injection um, unilateral sometimes and it's present early because can easily notice enlargement compared to the other eye. Treatment is surgical but again it varies uh, based on each patient's presentation. So for glaucoma in kids excessive tearing, photophobia and blepharism, uh, corneal and ocular enlargement usually unilateral. There's a congenital form which begins from uh, birth within three years and um, another juvenile form the most common type is primary which is an isolated abnormality of the drainage of the eye and you'll find elevated pressure. So those are the key points about glaucoma that you want to remember for the board exam. Finally let's review periorbital which is preceptal and orbital cellulitis. Preceptal is uh, mainly when there's an inflammation of the lids and the periorbital tissue without signs of true orbital involvement and that's related mainly due to a bacteria or abscess and uh, mostly due to group A strep and staph aureus. Orbital is when you have inflammation of the tissues of the orbit within uh, with pro pro uh, proptosis. Also patients have chemosis, inflammation, ophthalmoplegia, and edema of the eyelids and decreased visual acuity. Um, this is an emergency condition and it's more severe than preceptal or preorbital cellulitis. Usually what happens is that patients are anywhere from 10 months to 18 years of old and uh, most commonly related to direct extension or venous spread from contiguous sites. Uh, most commonly affects the ethmoid sinuses, uh, that's a key fact, and the organisms can be H. influenza, staph aureus, group A strep. Well, how do you make the diagnosis on the boards? Um, all of these require CT scan, maybe even an MRI with contrast. And um, it's important because for orbital, there's propoptosis, ophthalmoplegia, toxicity, and fever. So you want to understand um, if there's any subperiosteal abscess or any other spread to the CNS region. 
For preceptal preorbital cellulitis, signs of inflammation of the periorbital soft tissue with no propoptosis or ophthalmoplegia and a normal papillary function require no diagnostic tests unless you really suspect orbital cellulitis. In case, in that case, perform a CT. So, um, how do you treat this? Well, the next step in the management for preceptal is uh, understanding if the child is um, toxic or not toxic. If the child is not toxic, you can use oral anti-staphylococcal antibiotics and follow it closely. Otherwise, hospitalize patient for IV treatment. And for orbital, immediate hospitalization is required. And IV ampicillin sulbactam uh, is recommended. And if there's no improvement, then surgery or sinus drainage may be an option. So keep in mind that um, very high yield point, which is that for orbital cellulitis, you want to admit the patient for IV antibiotics immediately. Well, thank you for listening and good luck in your preparation for the board exam in medical school.